Welcome to another video from DIY Daily. Just been sponsored a new diagnostic machine, the K7 from King Bowen. I'm just going to run through a quick unboxing, just run you through what comes in the, in the packaging, run you through the device a little bit, um, and then we'll get it plugged into a vehicle and just show you some of the functions that we can do with it. Now I've had the unit for a couple of weeks now, so it's given me a good chance to try it on quite a few different vehicles and just run through some of the functions and just see what it's capable of. If we just get it up, just get it opened. Obviously, the main packaging is just this box there. And once you've got that out of the way, it comes in this sort of quite nice case. Just got to zip around the outside of it. And they've got the actual device itself. We'll just run through that in a minute. We'll just run you through what's in the packaging to start with. Basically, we've got an instruction manual and the password letter, which is just basically the serial number and the activation code to set it up. It was really straightforward to set it up. Add it up and running in about five minutes. And we've got the main charge plug there. Got a USB-C cable, which is for charging it up and just for connecting it to a computer if need be. Then we've got a couple of different adapters in there for some other plug types. And then we've got the actual uh, Bluetooth dongle connector as well there. So, uh, But all we're gonna do now, we'll just go find a vehicle that we've got that I can plug it in. We'll just run you through the device and the functions on the device, and then we'll run through what it can do. So, um, But just looking at the device itself, it's quite a nice size unit. It does come, it's a touch screen pad on it. It's just basically, it's really basic and simple to use, which is always nice with a diagnostic machine. You don't want them over complicated. It does have this sort of like rubbery texture to the outside as well, which just makes it a little bit better for not damaging it. So there are a couple of um, screw threads on the side there. I'm not actually too sure what they're for. There are some additional devices that you can get to work with it, like an oscilloscope. It might be to hold some of the bits to do with that, I'm not really sure. Um, but basically just an on-off button on the top there. Just got a little cover under there on the bottom, which has just got a USB port and the USB-C plug there. And on the back of it, it's just got the camera as well. Um, but yeah, we'll just find a vehicle now, see what we've got in the workshop, just get it plugged in and just run you through the device and then some of the functions that we can do with it. Right, so we've just come into the workshop and we've got a 2016 Ford Ranger. So I'm just going to use this just for a demo, just to plug it into, just to show you some of the functions on it. Um, but before we plug it in, I'll just run you through the main options on the uh, device itself. Um, to start with, you've got a store function there, which is where you would go just to purchase um, any new updates or anything like that. Uh, but you can see what we've got on there and when it's valid to. Now if we go back out of that one. I'm not going to go into these just yet. We'll go into them once we're um, ready to plug the vehicle in. Basically, you can just do a straight OBD scan, or you can go into this one to do, ready to do a full scan. But we'll show you all the options on there in a minute. Now, and the same with the reset as well. I'll just show you on this one, because I'll not use this for doing any resets, but if you was going to reset, I used this earlier on just to reset a service light on quite a new um, Skoda Fabia. And I just went into here, and then you've got your options for... Just look down... Of the oil one on there somewhere and get oil so i just had to go in there to reset the service light on there and um, but basically any reset that you need to do you can go into this function and then it'll just run through the model and you can go into it and um and reset it but i found quite a few i've had to do quite a few resets on some different models i've gone in through this and it's been able to reset everything that i've needed to so far so i'll just gently scroll for it so you can just see all the options what's on there um, but it is quite a compacted machine. There's basically there is a lot of options on there. I am used to using the Snap-on machine, and we've got a few other diagnostic machines as well. And basically, this has got most of the functions um, the same as like the top end machine, same as basically the Snap-on and the Bosch machines. It's actually all in there. It's just finding the locations from from most of the time. I'll just scroll back up about that. Uh, so that's in the reset option. Then we've got repair info. This is basically um, a load of quick sort of handy functions that you might need to use. You've got a, a quick link to a group to a Google Chrome. So you can go on there to search anything you need to. You can link it to a mail. You've got a calculator. You've got OBD fault library. So if you've got a code, you can just quickly bang it in just to search it. You can narrow it down on the code. Just an example, just search a quick P code. We've got a common one. And just bang that in quick it's just really quick it's just quite nice to refer to and you can just have a bit of a read up about it or if you wanted to you could have just gone into the google chrome just to a link and then you can just search it on the internet as well and um, we've got a few other options on there 
And I think the um, if you take any photos or any videos or anything like that, you can access that on the file manager there as well. And then we've got the update screen. Obviously, that's just for doing any updates on it. I've got a few updates. You can just see. I haven't actually ran through some of the updates on there at the minute. So it's got quite a few that weren't doing. Other than that, we've got module. Now, this is for additional bits that you can get for the machine. I haven't got these bits, but it's quite nice that it's got the function to be able to put some of them, some of them on it. So there is like a battery tester, an oscilloscope, printer, video scope, and there must be a TPMS um, device that you can get to link up to it as well. We've basically got file there, which is just storing all the history of um, vehicles that you've plugged in and what you've done on them and stuff like that. And then you've got the main settings menu. I'm not going to go too much through this, but I'll just generally scroll through it so you can see what's on there. Um, and now I've run through most of them functions, we'll just plug it in, we'll do a scan and just show you sort of what the capabilities are and what um, options are available on the scan. But it's quite a nice piece of kit to use really, it's a decent size, um, I've done quite a few, uh, sort of, I've, I've used it on quite a few vehicles now and it's proven to be quite a decent bit of kit. And say so it's got it has got all the functions on there as um, the same as some of the top end machines. So it's not just a code reader. It does do you can read all the live data. You can do a lot of um, things like DPF regen and you can do injector coding. You can see all the data data for the ABS and all the speed um readings and everything like that and if cer certain cars have functions for bleeding the brakes in like the end the um the abs ecu and this has got like there's them same procedures if the vehicle's got a procedure that you have to run through in the abs ecu to bleed the brakes um that it is it will be on there as well so um but to start with we'll just we have just got the um the dongle plugged in down there i'll just put the ignition on and then we'll just show you and um, plugging it in so basically we've got the ignition on now you can just do a straight obd scan just going into the engine ecu um, but that's obviously just quite a basic scan but i'm just going to run you through like doing a um a main scan so in this menu there we've basically got a history again just for searching through the the history of what you've been on which is always quite nice if you if you've been looking at some um it always stores the fault codes and you've been having a bit of issue where you you're clearing certain fault codes and you're coming back you can just go back in the log and you can see what it's stored so it's always quite handy for that um, but basically i always like to do the auto search first now it doesn't always work it does work on most models i have come across one model that it didn't work on where you had to put it in manually if you do have to put it in manually it's quite straightforward but you can narrow down through the market and you just have to um narrow down through the vehicle the age the engine and stuff like that so but if we go on auto scan it should work on this model it'll just do a vin scan recognize the vin and then it should narrow it all down Right, so it's narrowed it down now, and it comes up with this uh, this new screen. And basically, we've got a health report. This is what I always like to do uh, every time I plug it in. But basically, the, the health report does a full scan of every single ECU and just comes up with every single fault code that's in it. So it's always nice to do that, and you just you just know you're reading everything rather than just one of the ECUs. Um, but if you, get, if you do system scan, it basically runs through and it detects all the different ECUs that it's got, and then it, and then you can click onto them individually. Uh, and read them individually um say if it just had engine ecu airbag and abs it would just come up with m3 obviously most vehicles and modern vehicles anyway have got quite a few different ecus so it'll come up with all the different ones system selective just gives you the option to go into the um individual ones and what's quite nice about i've noticed these a few of these different diagnostic machines that i've tested they all run this android based system and um, but they do have common functions and special functions set, listed separate on this main screen which is always quite nice um just for the common common um issues or functions they might have to do you can just quickly go to them obviously depending on what vehicle you're plugging in they do differ as well so um, there is a module programming option as well i haven't had a chance to be able to have a go at programming any modules um but the function is on there so there must be certain modules that you can actually do that with um, but just before doing a full health report, I'll just show you, if we're going to say common functions there, it'll just show you a list of some options there. See, this one's got the bleeding for the, the brakes there. 
obviously there's loads and loads of different stuff so i'm not going to go through everything in too much detail i'm just going to show you some of the main functions and some of the main bits that you might want to use so. we've got special functions now again this is sort of different this is quite a ford base thing really where it separates into these four options a lot of cars a lot of the vag group stuff will just have certain um, listings on there but i don't know why the fords seem to separate it but if we was to say go into powertrain let's just have a lot of service functions um got some options on there and there should be the dpf regen option somewhere yeah if we go into there look fuel injection factors reset the put the uh, particle filter values now if you're working on a lot of modern vehicles you really do need a machine that's more than just um, a code scanner really because there's a lot of dpf faults nowadays where you do really need to be doing like regens and resetting the dpf values and stuff like that so but you can see we've got the option to do a proper dpf regen on there as well so it is you can see it is a lot more than just a basic scan tool although it scans all the ecus you can actually go quite in depth into each ecu as well but now i've just shown you through that we're going to health reports now we'll do a full scan obviously doing a full scan does take a little while um at the minute our snap on machine does seem to have slowed down quite a lot and this i'll, I'll leave it recording while it's doing it just to show you a real time for a full scan but obviously doing a full scan you do expect it to take a little while it's never going to be really quick trying to read every single ecu so um just see what's in this i haven't plugged it in for a little while but i think there'll be some faults relating to the glow plugs You just see there, it showed the timer next to it as well. So it took about a minute to do a full scan, which I didn't think was too bad at all, to be honest. Any sort of diagnostic machine to read every single ECU is going to take at least that sort of time. And then you can just scroll through. You can see the engine control module, it's flagged up. We've got five codes in there. I'm pretty sure that's five global codes. We'll check that in a minute. Power steering control module. And then everything else seems to look clear. But again, I'll just scroll down just to show you what it's read on this one. Yeah, so it's pretty clean other than these two faults there and then it's got a quick reference you can just click on the little down arrow it'll just show you you can see this one's got faults with all five glow plugs on it i don't actually put the engine light on on this but they do store in the engine ecu and then we've got this fault in the uh, power steering control module as well now from this window there you can just simply clear all the faults Again, if you wanted to, you could go into each individual ECU and just clear the faults out of that, that separate ECU if you didn't want to clear them all. But now that I've done that, that will clear every single ECU. And I'll just go into a few bits now and just show you what we can do in them. Just to start with, if we're going to say the ABS ECU there. Now again, you've got the read fault code, which we know there's no faults in there, so I'm not going to go into that. Um, but you've got actuation test. So you can run through some of the valves on the... So it's really complex. It's it's definitely got all the same sort of functions that we've got on the, the Snap-on machine that we use as well. So it does have a lot of um, capability. But we've gone to special functions. Then we've got the service bleed for the ABS on that. And then one really handy thing with um, some of these more complex machines especially like with abs as you can go into the data stream there and then we've got loads of information that we can read and one really handy thing that you want to be sort of using a bit if you're looking for abs faults or like that is um actually reading the wheel speeds from individual wheels i'm pretty sure i haven't had to use this machine for this yet but if we have a look it should have them on there okay you can just see the left front wheel speed there it should have all of them left rear all right front and just click on them free but if you do that you can get the wheel speeds up and you can drive down the road and you can see and if you've got like an abs fault on a certain wheel you can see what what the actual sensors are reading so it's always quite nice looking for abs faults with that function there so but just thought i'd just show that so you know that that's on there and um, we'll go back out the abs now 
and we go into uh, let's say the engine control module one thing it has got i'm not going to go into it but basically go in in through the same sort of options into like the airbag module or the body control module you can actually check the um the rotary switch for the airbag switch which is quite an handy thing again as well if you've got a fault with that you can see you can check the position so if the switch has been broken you turn the steering wheel and it's not moving you know that it's not picking up chances are you've got a faulty airbag rotary switch so it's quite handy for that but if we just go in back into um, engine control module Yeah, so this has got the same op sort of options again on there and i'll just show you what um what we've got in the data stream again not in this ecu um but with some of the others like actuation test if, if you're in like the body control module you can activate things like lights and stuff like that through the machine <clears throat> and same with windows and stuff like that which is it's just handy again if you're say looking for um trying to check for a faulty window switch the window's not working on the switch but you can operate the window by the diagnostic machine it um, just sort of points you points you in the right direction that you need to be checking the switch and stuff like that so it's always handy um like operating fog lights and stuff like that if you can operate them with the machine you know that the actual light unit and light and the, all the power supplies and everything are okay and you're more likely to it just gives you a bit of an indication where you should be looking at so yeah, so now that the actual data has come up i'll just show you just scroll through this again there's loads of stuff on there but if you just scroll through it quickly just so you can see what's on there and sometimes say looking for faults um i always like to do this if we, especially if you've got a fault where it's not putting any fault codes on the dash you really need to look through the data and you're looking for information that doesn't look like it's um or what looks like it's reading wrong so quite often you'll have temperature faults that aren't logging a fault um, but it's causing a problem so quite a few issues with like voxels where it's not logging a fault code but if you look at the actual temperature sensor reading for the coolant temp it's reading um sky high and that's what's causing the problems And you can see this is in alphabetical order and i'm only on c at the minute so just gives you some sort of idea of just how much information's on there all the egr all the dpf all the temp sensors absolutely loads of stuff on there so you can see it's a well-packed machine And just see how many items just listed on there so it's got loads of stuff so you could spend hours talking about and just running through all the different functions but just wanted to just run through some of the main things really and um, that's on data stream and then on special functions this should have most of the stuff that that um i was sort of running through earlier on and um, before we went read into reading the ecus but you can see we've got options there for the um the service functions in the powertrain control module which is like the regen and everything like that add blue systems if we've got any add blue issues or you need to do anything with there all the functions are on there and a lot of relearn something you have to do with quite a few forwards with uh, fuel sensors and stuff like that there's quite a few um relearning procedures that you might need to do Every time, another little handy thing as well. I've seen this on a few of these that's um, set up on this Android system. Every time you exit as well, it does always just give you a quick little reminder just to remove the VCI unit, which is always quite handy. Um, <coughs> obviously, <coughs> the only problem you might have sometimes, it is a lot nicer being a Bluetooth um, 
dongle there and being separate it just gives you the flexibility with the machine um, but the only thing that can happen is obviously you can forget to take it out so it does have a little light on it it's not mega bright but it does sort of stand out um, but most of the time obviously you've got to trim off it's just it is quite easy this way to leave the dongle on the car that's all but if it's just you sort of using it a bit it's not too bad um, but if it's a busy environment and a busy workshop between a few different lads uh, sometimes it's easy to make the mistake of leaving that on <clears throat> some of our machines have got like a cable attached to them which obviously just um sort of guarantees that you don't leave it in there that's all but so just going back out of that the only other option on there um, i've took the, the thing out now but if you just went into obd it would just do a straight scan that's all but um yeah it was just just thought I'd put this review together. Um, but yeah, so I've been quite happy with the machine so far. As I said, I've had it a couple of weeks now. So I've had a bit of a go with it. And it's, it seems pretty well equipped. It's definitely good value for money. Um, if you're interested in it, just check on uh, check the links in the description below. And I'll put a link to where you can get it from. Um, but it, yeah, it's definitely good value for money. You're getting the full capability of some of the top-end machines for a fraction of the price. So... Um, there's quite a few options on some different ones out there. I've had to do, um, I've got a few that I'm doing some reviews on, so you can have a bit of a look and compare them all. Um, but yeah, this um, I'll, I'll keep using this, see, see how I get on with it. It hasn't let me down so far, and um, we'll just keep using it and see how we get on with it. Um, but yeah, overall, quite happy with the machine, really. Um, but yeah, hope you all like the review. Um, don't forget to check it out on the links if you're interested in it. And check out the channel for any more reviews. And there's loads of repair videos in there on there as well you might be interested in. But yeah, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.